Grok 3 is really good at making games. Like, really good. Look at this. This was made with Grok 3. It is a full flight simulator. It has weather, it has full physics. Take a look. You can also shoot. So I'm trying to shoot these balloons. You can see the altitude, the speed, the throttle on the left side, and you can even copy the link up in the top right and send it to a friend and play with your friend. Here we can see different clouds that are floating around, and this is all running through the browser, all created with Grok 3 without writing a single line of code manually. So it is really, really impressive, and of course, I can shoot the buildings too. There we go. And you can also switch the view. You can actually be within the cockpit and fly the plane just like that. And it has a nice shaking effect, which is kind of dizzying. So we're gonna go back out and now it's nighttime again. So weather, daytime, nighttime, really good physics, all created with Grok. All of these buildings are randomly generated as well. All right, so coming in for a landing, going really slow. And I landed before the runway, but that's okay. No collision detection. Nope, going right through the other plane. And there it is. So I can come to a complete stop just like that. Continue shooting. Really amazing. Before I show you the next game, let me show you who it was created by. This is Levels.io. He said, I've never made a game before, and I just made my own flight simulator 100% with cursor and three hours, just by telling it what he wanted. He had to iterate, but it's all done in a single HTML file. Very, very impressive. Next by X user Danny Limoncetta, we have a game called Mech and Cheese, and this is a vampire survivor game clone. You shoot these little pieces of cheese, you're a robot, and yeah, there's scores, there's levels, and this is like something you would see one of those crappy iOS ads for. Here you can see now there's beast mode, and yeah, very similar to a lot of other games that you've probably already seen with this similar theme. But the cool thing is, created with Grok 3, no manual code written. And next, here's a Plants vs. Zombie clone. It is really, really well made, very polished. We have levels, you can select different defenses, there's walls, you can upgrade your turrets, there's solar power. Here you can see the different aliens running towards you, trying to get to the end, just like Plants vs. Zombies, and your job is to defend them all. And now you can add bombs, lasers, upgrades, very impressive, very complex, and all done with Grok 3. Next, Alvaro Cintas created a jump game. A couple of hours, a thousand lines of code generated. I now have a fully functional 2D vertical jumping game. Let's take a look. Now, one thing that jumps out to me immediately is the assets, the graphics are really good. Here you can select different sprites to use, different difficulty levels. All of the platforms are custom built using Grok. And yeah, just a very impressive game. Different backgrounds, easy, medium, hard, and your job is to get to the top. And there really is no top, it's just to get as high as you can. I used to love playing these types of games. So he also explains how he was able to create this game. Don't ask for every single detail and feature, start with something simple. So that's what you're seeing here. Create a basic 2D vertical jump game using HTML and CSS. And there it is, very simple, good place to start. Then from there, the assets were created using, of course, Grok 3. So here are the platforms and the sprites. Then from there, you iterate, you add the assets, you add fine tuning to it, you touch it up, make sure it's nice and complete. All right, next, although not a game, really cool. Lord Asado created this and he calls it a 3D interactive generative art piece where basically you have these strands that you can flick and this is done on a phone so you can actually touch it and you have all of these controls so number of threads particles per thread stiffness gravity force strength etc and so just something really beautiful to play around with and again written by Grok3 and all of the controls that you're seeing on the right side were suggested by Grok3. Everybody is going to be capable of creating a game whatever game they want that is gonna be hyper customized for them. It's really an incredible time to start building. So first, Lord Asado described what he wanted from Grok 3, then asked for help describing it. So again, using AI models to write the prompt for AI models or come up with a framework for the AI model, just really cool stuff. Then 
started saying some stylistic stuff and finally ended up with this really cool demo. Thanks to the sponsor of this video, Stagehand by Browserbase. As a developer, you know people are spending way too much time doing the same tasks every single week. Checking email, finding things on Amazon, getting your grocery list set up. And of course, you know there's an easier way. Agents are now starting to use the web just like humans. And that's where Stagehand comes in. Stagehand is an open source framework that sits on top of Playwright and uses AI to make your automations actually resilient. Enable your agents to browse the web. And here's the cool part. You can describe what you want in natural language, but still have full control over how your automations operate. And with this, the browser-based team created Open Operator, which is an open source version of OpenAI's operator. So I'll link the open source repo down below, check it out, star it, and you could connect your agents to start browsing the web immediately. Huge thanks to BrowserBase for sponsoring this video and contributing such an awesome tool to the open source community. Let me know what you think in the comments about this and now, Back to the video. Next, we have another generative art piece. We have a 3D city in cyberspace, Cyber Manhattan using Grok 3. And it is 276 blocks cubed and it fully charged with digital energy. So we can try it out ourselves. And there it is, running in the browser, no problem. I really like it. It's really cool to look at. Obviously there's a lot more that can be done with it. It's pretty simplistic right now, but Still, being able to create this in one shot is very impressive. I really like how the stars move as I'm rotating the cube. It just feels really nice. By the way, I'll drop all of the links in the description below. Next, we have another one-shotter. We have a simple 3D game. Let me open it up and show you. So you have your little 3D character running around the 3D map. Again, one shot, very impressive. So you have your little character who can run around. You can turn this into a 3D shooter. You can turn this into a 3D puzzle game. There's just so much that can be done with this. I imagine adding portal-esque elements to it where you can shoot a portal gun, enter one side, exit the, out the other. Wouldn't be too hard from here. Now, Ben Dower, the author of this game, gave it very explicit and thorough instructions. Build a 3D maze game, actually describe the libraries and dependencies to use, the scene setup, the maze generation, how it should be done, wall and collision setup, everything. So this is much more explicit than I've seen other prompts be, but of course, then he gets exactly what he's looking for. And since he provided the entire prompt, I'm gonna try to recreate it myself. And I'm gonna turn on thinking, let's paste it in and hit enter. All right, so after thinking for 137 seconds, I'm now getting the code and it is outputting very fast. So let's load it up and see if it works. All right, now keep in mind, this was all done in one go. I do see a lot of errors, so we'll see. Maybe that's just linting issues, but we'll see. All right, and there it is. I just saved the game and it seems to work. This is unbelievable. I can zoom in all the way down to here. Let's look what the character looks like. Uh, can't get to his face. I could zoom out. Oh, you can look under, he gets blocked. There's collision detection and it works quite well. So yeah, I mean, this was easy. I just had to copy paste what somebody else already did. But honestly, this would have been easy even without that. Next is a Wordle clone. Literally just a clone of Wordle. I asked Grok3 to write a Wordle clone, but with seven letter words and seven attempts. And this is by Nima Auji. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. If we open it up, that's exactly what it is. You guess a word, it's seven letters, you have seven attempts. When you guess the right letter, but the wrong space, it comes in yellow. When you guess the right letter in the right space, it's green. And if you don't get the right letter, it's gray. Exactly how Wordle works, all done in minutes. And actually 90 seconds in total, very fast. And he also linked to the Grok conversation. So here's the entire prompt. Write the code for a web-based Wordle game clone with seven letter words and seven guesses with some random seven letter words. That's it. And you get all of this code and the instructions for how to put it all together. And last, we have a VR shooter. So don't just think about web games. Don't just think about iOS apps. You can also build stuff for VR. And let me open it up and show you. So here it is. You have these red blocks coming towards you. The gray things down below are supposed to represent your arms and you shoot little yellow balls at the red blocks and get points for it. All done with one go, very quick. Obviously you can continue iterating and build out a full nicely polished game, but this is a great start. Now you can play this. I don't have a quest, but I'll show it to you in the browser. 
So here it is. Now I can't actually control it because I don't have VR, but I can move around. I can't shoot as far as I can tell. I'm not sure how at least. And yeah, so I mean, it's 3D, looks really cool. Even the text is 3D. See, I can go, kind of go around it. I just think that's so awesome. So if you want to build a game, now is the best time. All right, and so that's it. You can create games pretty easily. I'm likely gonna do another vibe coding video where I create a brand new game. So if you have suggestions for what that game should be. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.